Okay, so yes, I've been having some technical difficulties. That's why we're going live and we're not. Uh, I hope that we're live. I hope you're seeing me. I see some people in the comments. There we go. Yeah, we got some. I've been busy, busy, busy in the shop and I'm going to do the lives are working. So uh, I'll do the Saturday live and then after Saturday evening. Uh, come Sunday, I'm going to have to start doing some deep diving in my computers and the software and find out what's going on. I think I've just got it overburdened. Uh, so uh, I don't know. Uh, hey there, let's see. We got, uh, I don't know if Al's still here. I don't know if anybody gave up on me getting here after waiting and waiting and waiting. But Al was showing here. Uh, question mark. Will I get a dark engrave on an S10 10 watt? Not sure what an S10 is, but yes, I'll show you how to get a dark engraving on a 10 watt. That was part of my delay. I was going to go live earlier, uh, but I, I said, you know what? I need to run some tests for a 10 watt and show the same results on a 10 watt. So yes, we will talk about some dark engravings in a 10 watt. Uh, hello, Bob. How are you doing, sir? Uh, Jesse's in the house. In fact, Jesse and Jesse and Bob. <laughs> uh, uh, I got. I, I mentioned this the other day in a live stream. Uh, Chicago Bob was kind enough to send us out a little notepad with a pen holder and got a nice little message on the back. And I appreciate that. Uh, I got two gifts in the mail today, which was shocking and surprising. And uh, one of them was uh, from, from John A. We'll just say John A. John, I got your gift and thank you. It was greatly appreciated. And this one is from, uh, yeah, from Jesse. <laughs> and <laughs> I got a, another post-it note holder. Now, Chicago Bob, you're going to have to up your game a little bit. The, I don't know if you've seen these, but it's, it's kind of cool here. Uh, the little rubber pin clip thing going on there and nothing on the pin. Uh, and that's, a, I guess, a bamboo pin. That's that's pretty cool. But I seen that and I said, ah, you, uh, Jesse, you need to uh, email me your link on that. Those are, those are pretty cool. Uh, and just to share with you the message he put on there, it says, Hey, Steve, you do a great job teaching us how you make your files and how to create our own files. You're very informative and greatly appreciated. Thank you, Jesse. And then he's got down here, little bit small letters. <laughs> P.S. I took this file from Chicago Bob. <laughs> so thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Bob. Uh, let's see. Uh, I see your chat, Al. And yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, we've been, we're struggling. We are struggling. All right, we got 22 people here. Hey, there's Carl. Carl's in the house. Uh, and I'm not going to wait too much longer, and we're going to do something. There's only 22 of you here right now, less than 30 of you. I'm going to start a, uh, I'm gonna start a giveaway right now. Choose live stream. Let's see, how do we do this? Uh, well, got to go back this way and then go back here and go. I got to learn how to do this so that when it comes time to give away that rolly, I'll be able to do it seamlessly. StreamYard. Giveaway. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. I've done this before, and I don't know how to get back there again. We're going, we're going to do it. Uh, come on, I'm telling you guys, I'm having all kinds of technical difficulties. Uh, but I have learned so much about engraving bamboo in the last four days. I really, I still ain't a big fan of it, but I like it a whole lot more now. And uh, let's see here, StreamYard giveaway. And I tell you, I was, uh, I was making some progress. 
and and then I watched um, Clack Shack. Clack did a live here a few nights ago where he did ten bamboo cutting boards live, and he mentioned something in his settings, and I was like, "What? Are you no? Nah, that it seems counterintuitive to me. I did it didn't did not seem right." And so I said, "You know what? I'll I'll try it." Here we go. Streamyard giveaway tool. Choose a live stream. There we go. Bamboozled by bamboo. Text match. All right. Let's get this out of here. And let's see who, what we got here. We got 37 people now. By the time I, I got around to figuring this out, it's nearly doubled. Uh, let's do, uh, uh, we're going to uh, just type in uh, hashtag or pound sign. Uh, Simple free F R E E hashtag free start collecting comments. All right, so hashtag free, and what it's going to be is I'm going to give away. We're going to engrave uh, right here, right now, a uh, uh, bamboo cutting board, and we're going to give that away pretty quick, right out of the gate, and then show you how quick this is to do. Cause that one of the other biggest con complaints I ever had about bamboo. And if you have a lot of the libraries that are out there, the common theme in most of those libraries is to go slow and low, slow speed and low power. I'm impatient. I am impatient. I don't want to wait and I want to go fast. And that was the one thing that, Clack was doing the other night. He was he was going at. In fact, I wrote down his uh, his his speeds and power. Now Clack still uses uh, because he I think he started with X Tool and X Tool still works in millimeters per second, and that's what he learned and that's what he knows. And he said he was doing two hundred millimeters a second at a hundred percent power, which is twelve thousand millimeters a minute, and he was doing it on the rolly. And he was doing it in a zero scan. And it was, you know, knocking it out pretty darn quick. But as he has told his customers, and we all know bamboo is inconsistent. If nothing else, the only consistent thing about it is its inconsistency. And that's what I don't like about it. And in his live stream, he had some that looked out pretty good and some of them that had a lot of white in them. But you know, he, he's already, his end user already knows about it. They're aware of it. And it's a characteristic of the, of the, the grass bamboo, because uh, that's what a bamboo is. It's a grass. It's not a wood. Uh, so it all works for him. Well, I, I don't like having those inconsistencies. When I do something, I want it to be jam up. I want it to be tight. So I'm like, I want to find a better way to make it more consistent and listening to something else that he said, I said, what, wait, what? That don't make no sense. So I had already done uh, lots and lots of testing. I, I, I showed y'all some of this the other night. Uh, those were a bunch of tests that I was doing. And then a, a, a few more tests that I was doing. And then I got uh, this half of the no, this half of the board over here was all tests I was doing. And then I heard his technique and I was like, let me try that. Because I'm not having the luck that I want. And then I did what he was doing in combination with what I was doing. And the two, I think, are kind of the secret sauce so all right we are going to let's see here i'm going to put this over here and the other thing i didn't think i did is i don't know if i shared my screen right last time but we're going to try that now we're going to say okay there's 21 entries and we're going to draw and this is going to go to luann foster okay luann Luann is our first winner, and we're going to give away several of these tonight because I'm going to try different techniques to show you the different results. And the other thing that I'm going to just kind of briefly, 
in Clax, uh, he was using the Roly MK2 with the 30 watt laser, as that's what I'm using tonight. Uh, and uh, he was still using his uh, not templates, but uh, what what do you call those? He uh, maybe there were templates, but he would put in the an angle template down in the corner, and then an angle up there to help make sure it was square. I ain't gonna do all that. I'm because the Roly is a precision machine. I have measured this, and it's 15 millimeters tall and two, uh, 22 millimeters wide. Centimeters, not millimeters. I'm gonna put it right there in the corner of the work bed. Then we're gonna jump over here to light burn and get over here to light burn and go away, go away. Tool path. I'm just gonna draw out a rectangle and put in here it was uh 22 centimeters, so 220 millimeters and 150 millimeters. No, come on now, I'm in inches. Go to millimeters, stupid. Golly. All right. Uh, width was 220 and 150. All right. Then I'm just going to dock it right down in the bottom left corner. I'm going to come up here and Luann, I hope you're okay with bless this kitchen. Because this is the graphic I'm going to put on here and I'm just going to select my tool path. Tell it to go to the center of the tool path. That's a little bit small for me. So I'm just going to zoom in here and make that a little bit bigger. Uh, about like that. I've already got my settings in there. And let's see here. I've already focused the machine and make sure nothing's changed. Yep, we're good. We're golden. And now uh, we will send this job and you'll see the laser start doing its thing here. Laser, 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 start. Now, uh, this is, um, come back over here, go to inches. It's only about three and a half inches square on this image. And we look at the preview. Uh, it's less than eight minutes to do this particular engraving. Now, this is uh, going to be the first of probably two or three we're going to do tonight. And we're going to do it with different settings and see the different results. But for the, the biggest thing uh, that Clack mentioned he was doing that I had not been doing, and it seemed so counterintuitive to me, was his lines per inch. Now, as we all know, whenever we engrave bamboo, bamboo is very fibrous, and you will see the lines in the bamboo. And I, I was of the mindset that, okay, if uh, one, I was going to go against the grain. I wasn't going to go with the grain. If I went against the grain, a 90 degree across the grain of the grass. And then uh, if any of you have ever done any woodworking with a skill saw and you want to make a notch and something, you take that skill saw and you just barely cut the width of the blade and keep doing that and you know you can cut out a notch well you, and you can remove all that material well i was kind of thinking the same process if i if i kept getting my lines per inch tighter and tighter then i could cut those fibrous grains away and try to make it as smooth as possible so i was 250 lines per inch 350 lines per inch even up to 500 lines per inch all I was doing was actually just getting more and more lines because the, the the way that bamboo burns, it's so soft, except for those fibers. By making it that tight, I was burning that much more, and it was just creating bigger and deeper valleys and lots more. And I said, okay. Well, Clack mentioned he was only doing 150 lines per inch. And I said, okay, that just – but he's – He's been doing this since him and uh, Noah come over on the ark. He's been doing this for a long time. 
and he's extremely happy with his results and his customers are extremely happy with his results. So I, I, I listened and said, okay, 150 lines French. We need to go test this out and see what this is going to do. So I went back to this test board and all of this is, this was all pre Clax live stream. This is all after Clax live stream. And I did some things that Clack didn't do. And I talked to Clack today and told him about it. And I'm encouraging him to go and test this. And once you see, and I'm I'm the kind of person that uh, show me. I might have been, I might maybe I was supposed to grow up in Missouri because <laughs> I'm like, show me. Missouri is a show me state. I, I, I you tell me something, oh, I I want to see it. Show it to me. And then I want to see it, not just because I want you to prove it to me, but I want to see it so I understand it. So I created some visual aids also. Uh, where did I put it? It's laying here some. Oh, here it is. Uh, to help understand what's happening and why what's happening, because I was confused for probably six or eight hours about why I was getting the results I was getting. So, and I don't know how well it'll show up here, but you can see how much darker, and this is actually burnt too much, but these were actually, uh, these were actually Clax settings. Um, and I was like, okay, well, that's that was burning a little too dark and too heavy. So then I went back and I started using my, techniques that I was figuring out along with his 150 lines per inch and got these settings. And I was like, okay, I'm really liking what I see here. I'm, uh, and now if how, somebody put in there, uh, somebody drop in the comments, if you're doing bamboo with a 10 watt laser, what speed and power have you been using to do bamboo? Speed and power. Guys, what are you guys using? Nobody's got it memorized. Everybody going to jump over to Lightburn and pull up your library. If you are, everybody's pulling up the same library. Uh, and it's probably going to be something like uh, 2,500 millimeters a minute and 30% power. Anybody? Anybody got any settings they use? Are y'all still with me? Man, I hope I didn't lose nobody. Ain't no comments coming across. Okay, Bob says he uses 5,000 and 100% power. Okay, all right. Uh, and Long Hair Miss says she's not been doing any bamboo. Now, I haven't ha tested any uh, five and a half. Uh, all right. Well, Bob, 5,000 millimeters per minute and 100% power. This uh, is uh, 10,000 millimeters a minute and 100% power. And I, this is, is really a dark, deep engrave. And I was like, okay. Now on the Roly, uh, when Clack was using it, he was doing his on the X on a zero degree scan angle. And the Roly has a max speed of 30,000 on the X, 30,000 millimeters per minute on the X. On the Y, it's slower to 24,000. And I was doing mine on a Y and then I, and his was on the X and, and I said, well, I'm, I'm going to try that a little bit. But I was getting such dark engravings all the way up. I said, you know, and it has a maximum speed of 24,000, but I didn't know what it was at the time. I knew it was 30 on the Y, but I didn't know what the, the X rather. And I didn't know what the Y was. So I did this test from 20,000, to 30,000 millimeters per minute. And 
these there's a variation up to about right here, and then all these above are the same because that's its max speed. But up to 24,000 millimeters a minute at 100% power, and I'm still getting a nice dark brown engraving. Now, it's not black. You know, some, some of these over here are really deep and dark and black, and these haven't been washed or cleaned up. But uh, I also agree with Clack. I don't like black on bamboo. I don't like to see a really dark, dark engraving. Uh, he His words was he liked to see, like it's kind of like smeared chocolate or melted chocolate on there. It just gives it a good contrast on the bamboo. But here was 20,000 uh, up to 30,000 line, or yeah, lines, 20,000 to 30,000 millimeters per inch at 150 lines. I'm not 100, 20,000 millimeters per minute up to 30,000 millimeters per minute at 150 lines per inch done on the Y. So now I wanted to test that same thing on the X because it can go up to 30,000. I said, I was getting really good burns all the way up to 24,000. So I said, well, let's try it on the X, which can go even faster. So these, these over here are ones I did on the X, a 90 degree in scan, all right? And I got, you know, okay results. Uh, and actually, that's at 150 lines per inch. But I wasn't getting the results that I was getting here. And then I said, well, I wonder if it's a difference in the LPI. So I increased it to 250 lines per inch on both of these. And then I said, well, maybe it's the fact that now with me doing it on the X and it's going with the grain of the bamboo, it's creating different results. So I twisted the board and still doing it on a zero scan, but going against the grain. And these are identical, but there's a big difference between this one and this one. And they should be the exact same. And they're not. And so I was getting different results and I'm getting... We're not getting squirreled. I'm just going, I'm, I, I did so many tests. I was like, and not getting the same results. I'm like, why, why is this not being the same? Well, and I'm telling you a lot of all this because your laser, if it's not the Roly Laser Matic MK2 with the 30 watt laser, your laser is not going to be the exact same results that I'm going to be discussing with you. But the techniques that I'm going to explain to you is how you can test your laser to find the exact same results. The reason that this burns so much better and so much darker whenever I was going on the Y compared to when it was going on the X is because of the shape size, the shape and the size of the spot size on the Roly Lasermatic. Uh, MK2. When using the MK2 30 watt, the spot size is 0.35 by 0 0.22. 0 0.35 by 0 0.22. 0 0.35 millimeters on the X and 0.22 on the Y. And so I'm like, okay, well, that's, that's not that much of a difference, but I'm getting a huge difference in results. Now, the secret to getting such excellent results at such high speeds is the one thing I hadn't shared with you yet. I pre-focused the laser. And Clack mentioned in his, he said, yeah, if you watch his live, he says he, he uh, raised the focus on it. I, I say pre-focus. It's before focus. So pre-focus. He said that he, he focused it, and then he gave it a little bit of a turn and just took it out of focus a little bit. I, I pre-focused it five millimeters, five whole millimeters. That's how high, if I bring this laser down here, uh, let's see here, cancel, move this, bring the laser into position. You can see that laser is I can get my hand underneath it. It's five millimeters out of focus. Okay. 
and that's going to clean up really good. And I'm going to go wash it. And then you'll once I wash it, it says bless this little kitchen. Once I wash it, this little will show up even better. But pre-focusing it, five millimeters. And that made all the difference in the world. And then I'm going to use my little show and tell, my, my tool that I created to help myself understand why that worked and why it works on the why on my laser. And your spot size shape is going to determine what you need to do if it's on the X or the Y. Let me go wash this off. All right, so she's still wet. And if I was going to be doing bamboo the way Clack does it, where he's got a customer and he's end user, he's sending these to, and these would be the settings that I would probably use if I was going to be doing something for sale. And she's still wet. But it's a nice chocolate piece. And you can see the this little pops out of that as a relief engraving. It's not a dark, dark black piece, but as I said, we're going to do some more. We're going to now. Uh, let's see here. Uh, boogity, 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 go away. All right, Luann, you need to send me an email at hobowithwood at gmail.com. Hobowithwood at gmail.com. Let me see if I've got that in here anywhere. Uh, Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, no, there, here we go. Uh, no, no, but I'll put this, no, that's not a, that's not a banner. That's a bubble. Um, but if anybody's been on the fence about pulling the trigger on a rolly, and after you see this tonight and you go, I'm really liking what I see. If you're going to consider buying yourself a rolly, I'd appreciate it. It would help me out a little bit with, if you use my affiliate link, which is hobowithwood.com slash Rolly. Uh, but my email, I don't have a banner with my email on it, but it's really hard. There's my name up there in the top corner of the screen, hobowithwood at gmail.com. Send me a email with your mailing address, and I'll get this out to you tomorrow. Uh, and we're going to be doing some more, and I'm going to be using some different settings to see how much variation you'll be able to see in one and the other. Uh, and I'm even going to do it. That's with the 30 watt. We're going to do one with the 10 watt too, because I know that a lot of you watching out there, that's what your laser is, is the 10 watt. So we're going to do one to see what those results look like in the 10 watt. The only difference being I'm going to be changing the speed and the power, but I'm still going to be using that five millimeter pre-focus, above focus. And the way I did that is I've got two pieces of two and a half millimeter wood there. I just stacked up on top of each other. And then I took my focus tool and then I focused to there. And that's how I raised the focus and how I know I got it exactly the same every time. Oh, now let's see here. Uh, can I go back? Yeah, all right. To stream, Boozle. All right. Um, all right. Just in case, let's do. Um, uh, and I'm going to put this in the comments. Uh, and I'm going to answer some questions here in just a minute before we uh, go. On to the next one. I'm gonna look and see all what your questions are about. 
But while we're doing that, uh, pound hobo nation. So I just dropped in the comments there, hashtag or pound hobo nation. Uh, let me let me create that. It ain't created yet, so don't start doing it yet. Uh, pound. Nope, that's a dollar sign. Stupid. Where is that hashtag at? You just typed it. Number three. Uh, hobo nation. Start collecting. All right. So start putting in hobo nation, and that'll be for the next one we're going to do, and we're going to do it with different powers and speed settings. Uh, still on the 30 watt, and then we're going to do a 10 watt again, too. All right, so let me back up here and look at some of the questions. All right. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. Jimmy says that his fill was at 3,050 percent and then line after fill. And that's another thing that uh, I, I'm, that I do. I hadn't talked about it yet, but yeah, that's another thing, guys, that you sh should do with your bamboo if you are really wanting to make it stand out. Uh, a line after fill will help accentuate that and make it stand out even better. So uh, the rest of the lines are at 1,550% bamboo, Dollar Tree, yep, on the 10 watt. Um, yeah, I'll be I'll be interested to see how my 10 watt settings compare to your 10 watt settings. Uh, so yeah, Bob, five millimeters, five whole millimeters, and that's and and Bob says you can't argue with the results. Now I tell you, that's guys, I'm no professional. I'm a hobo with a laser. And I'm figuring this out as I go. And like I said, it was, uh, I, I didn't, I, I finally began to understand it. And you will too in a minute about why the 150 lines per inch worked with this pre-focus and running on the Y on this laser. Uh, because I, I said, I, 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 I was lost. I was completely lost because it didn't make any sense to me. But I did finally figure it out, and you'll understand too. Um, let's see here. What kind of oils are those in the big jars? Uh, that's not oil. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, and no, would the 45 degree trick that you use for curve work on engraving? Uh, it might work on engraving on regular woods, maybe, but on bamboo, there's not going to be any advent. It's not going to be advantageous, and you're going to know why in a second when I I show you my visual aid <laughs> and explain my visual aid. Um, the uh, the 45 really is mainly for finding that perfect kerf for box fittings and box joints. Um, that's the only real, real big benefit to it. Um, now, when it comes to actual engraving images, I read somewhere a little over a year ago, and this squirrel uh, is, the human eye has a hard time detecting the scan angle of about 22 and a half degrees, which we can't do half degrees in light burn. But if I'm doing an actual image, I actually do a scan angle of 22 degrees. And it's just something I, you can Google it and research it. But I did. Uh, but something about the human eye, just we can see 90 degrees real easy and at 90 degree intersections. And we see 45s real well. But splitting that difference, the eye doesn't pick up on any patterns in that array that, that easily. So... Uh, Let's see here. Questions, questions, questions. We got a lot of hobo nation. You're right. okay now. Uh, Jimmy says I will try to pre-focus and see what happens. I used it on plywood, but not on bamboo. Yeah. Now, but 
it's not just about the pre-focusing, Jimmy. You need to, and some of the people might be watching this on a replay, and they might watch all of it. They might miss some of it. But with the way my brain jumps around, and you jump around on my videos, and you're going to miss something crucial like what we're getting ready to explain. Uh, so I've, I've made comments before that the laser beam coming out of your laser is hourglass shaped. The reason you have a focal gauge is because, and and they and Rowley says the spot size on this laser is 0.35 by 0.22 when it's focused, focused to a, a certain spot. And if you're going to be cutting, they want you to lower your focus, so you're lowering that that foc that optimal focal point into the materials that gives you a better cutting power. Well, the only way that that can be true is the, the, is your, your, your laser beam, and this is exaggerated. I went and got the specs, 35 by 22, and scaled it up by a value of 100. So this is... 100 times the width at the optimum here. So it's actually uh, 22 millimeters and 35 millimeters across here at its intersection there. That would be the perfect spot size on my laser. And whenever I raise pre-focus that laser, if this is the perfect spot size right here, and I raise the laser, what happens to my laser beam? It got wider. See what? But that's on my laser with its spot size. But when you look at it on the X, the X dimensions is only, uh, or, I'm sorry, on the Y, the Y is only 22 millimeters. Well, when you raise when you when you raise it, what happens to it? Nothing. It does not change the the width of the laser. It stays the same. But here, it gets a lot wider, and that is my understanding of why this come out much much darker. And, and deeper than these did because scanning it on the Y, it's a wider beam at 150 lines per inch. Here, now I'm scanning it on the X, same lines per inch, but it's a narrower, you know, 0.22 beam. It didn't get any wider. It just got out of focus. So that's how my brain works on that. Uh, again, I ain't had no training. I didn't put it under no microscope. I ain't got no line gauges. I haven't been to any laser schools. I'm just, it's common sense. Uh, but I got a troll the other day. Oh, you putting out misinformation. Lasers ain't hourglass shaped. Hourglasses are bulbous. They're round. And our, the laser's not round. It doesn't get, you know, so you're putting out misinformation. Is it looks like the shape I see on the back of a black widow spider. And whenever my face says, I did, how do you identify black widow? It's got a red hourglass on his belly or on his abdomen. So yeah, no, it's not literally an hourglass shape, but that's what it's reminiscent of. All right. So now we're going to draw, we've got 21 in entries and let's go over here and we're going to hit draw for the second one. Brad, Tim, Brad, congratulations. We're going to send you a, a hobo cutting board here. Same thing goes to you. And I just seen my name pop up in there because I put in there what to put in. Should my name arise, of course, I don't win it. We'll draw again. But we won't, we'll use something different next time. Brad, 
hobo with wood at gmail.com hobo with wood at gmail.com now what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab another one of the same boards and just slide it right into the corner of the honeycomb not having to worry about refocusing or changing anything but i am going to change my power and speed settings I want to do uh, something a little bit darker. Let's see. I don't want that one. I want uh, this one. I got so many tool charts around here. It ain't even funny. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, who, who? Let's see. Somebody put up here. Oh, but that was on the 10 watt, though. Uh, is any, I, I, I tell you what. Uh, does anybody have a 30 watt, be it a rolly or that day you're doing bamboo on and they know what their speed and power settings they're using would be. Nothing real quick. All right. I'm going to, let's see, go back over here to light burn. And that was that, that first one I did, you can see the speed and power there. That was at 20,000 lines or 20,000 millimeters a minute. 20,000 at 100% power. We're going to, that wasn't, uh, that was not clack settings. We're going to use clack settings. 12,000 and 100% power. And I'm going to be doing it on the Y at a 90 degree scan angle. And say okay and let's see here we're yep that's good all right so now these are actually uh clacks speed and power when he did bamboo the other night and i just dropped that on the honeycomb and no uh no angles nothing because the honeycomb is fixed it's and i'm just got that setting in the same tool path same measurements, hit start, and she's off to the races. Now, this one, uh, this one's saying seven minutes and 40 seconds. And like I said, these are clack. If I know right now, clack's on the road driving, or he's no, he's probably in reached his destination by now. Uh, when you get back to the shop, I really, 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 really want you to try some of these techniques. The pre-focusing up to five millimeters. And even though the scan speed is faster on the X on the Roly, do it on the Y. And look at the difference in the darkness and how much uh I think it just looks better. Uh but now this is gonna be a real good demonstration. Because this was at and that's getting good and dry now. Uh and you start to see the contrast there, this little is popping out. That's, again, this was 20,000 millimeters a minute. 20,000. That's fast on bamboo. Um, let's see here. Ba, ba, ba. Bob says, I was told that it is similar to using a magnifying glass as you raise. And yeah, yeah, yep, yep, that, that makes sense too. Uh, Jeff says, I feel the same as Bob. The beam should be bigger in both directions, just like a flashlight. <laughs> Hello, redneck. <laughs> I call him a redneck because he's, he's local. Uh, and if you're in Gaston County, you're a redneck. Uh, let's see here. Questions, questions, questions. Uh, all right. Uh, he's got uh, HVAC says they got 30, but haven't done any bamboo yet. Well, once you see this and start to comprehend it, uh, and I'm going to try and put it all in a real concise nutshell here at the end. Uh, Bob says, so the beam shape is similar to two funnels, small end to small end because it's three-dimensional. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the, like I said, I've done some, Googling and some research only to be dangerous with the information I've got. And there are different types of uh, 
way that they collimate collimate the lasers, and they can actually, uh, I think it was a flat top laser or a flat head or something that's one type of uh, terminology, but it's how they get it all to focus to a certain way. But there's all kinds of techniques and all kinds of, but from, from what I'm observing firsthand, that's the way that my mind, because I was trying to wrap my head around it. I was like, why is it so much darker and deeper and better running this way? And it's not doing nearly as much this way. When it, and so I started thinking about the spot size and how that works. And so, it, you know, that, that, that made more sense to me than, than anything to go from focus to free focus and see how much bigger and wider the laser beam got. I was like, okay. Now that's starting to make sense. Uh, oh, got another redneck. Hey, redneck. <laughs> uh, may I ask, do you have a five and a half watt unit? And if so, can you sometimes do a video on that? I do have a five and a half. Uh, I'm so, it's not that I can't, I'm just so impatient. Um, uh, I, I got the five and a half and played with it for a little bit. I, I was like, okay, well, those are kind of neat for doing small images and stuff. But like even doing this bamboo here, the, the settings that I have been told and taught the Bible that the way you do bamboo is slow and low, slow speed and low power is how you get the, the best results in bamboo is what I've been taught. I don't like slow <laughs> and I don't like low. And uh, I know Clack doesn't like low because he talks about, you know, when he does his uh, speed and power test, he looks for his optimum results at 100% power because I'm going to run it. He says, I'm going to run it as fast as I can, as strong as I can, and get that job done. Well, there's just nothing fast about the five and a half unit. Uh, it's not, uh, I'm just impatient. And I would like to say, yeah, I could do that, but uh, it, it's a whole ordeal for me to get it out of storage and get it all set up. And then not impossible, but I'm not going to commit to it. <laughs> uh, okay. Steve says, okay. He's here. We can start now. Well, you don't miss two giveaways, or at least one. I don't know when you got here, but and and that yeah, you probably missed both of them. And and I did that, guys, on purpose because I wanted to do a couple of these live so you can see the results for yourself and see that what I'm talking about. I'm not just blowing smoke. I didn't do a few results and say, hey, look, this is what I think. We're gonna see it here in real time, firsthand. Uh, and I wanted to be able to do that. So, and I said, you know what? For the folks that are here, whoops, we're right out of the gate. We'll start giving stuff out. Uh, yeah, uh, Ed, uh, we, I actually, we need to, uh, uh, you're, you're here in Gaston County, Jackson, Gaston County. Uh, Jack, if you're shopping for a 20 watt, uh, I might have some lasers. I might make you a deal on. I've got I've got some some nice stuff here uh, that I don't use. I've got the Falcon Two pre, uh, Reality Falcon Two Twenty Two Watt and uh, another one. Uh, so I've got a couple here that they're open gantry. They're not full enclosures like this. But uh, Jack's local, Ed's local. We actually probably should form the Redneck Laser Society or something. And uh, maybe get together once a month and do something. But uh, Jack was going to take me up to West Penn the other night, and I was sick, and I didn't want to share that with him. So we, I ended up not going. All right, now this is looking a lot darker. And I shouldn't be looking at that like that, but... Uh, Let's see here. Yeah, I had to send two of my 20 watts back because they never worked. Yeah, I, 
I, I, I don't want to. And, and guys, I, and that's what I told Clack today. I'm, I'm not one to test, test, test. It's like, you've never seen me do a video, I don't think, on my Falcon 2 22 watt. I like it, but I've not done any videos promoting it. And I've got another one that I they don't care so much. I've got, I don't just harp everything that's sent my way. I, and I don't do everything. I don't take all the lasers they ask me to look at. I only want the best. I, I don't want to mess around with any junk. Um, and uh, and I feel like this right now is the Ferrari of lasers. If you want a fully enclosed laser. Now, if you're needing something to do bigger projects on uh, and the open gantry is the way to go, then that Creality Falcon 2 is pretty, pretty good. Oh, uh, all right. Now, straight off the laser, and uh, now, uh, there's the first one. Straight off the laser, she's a little darker. I'm going to go wash this one off and see, because you can see the bottom there is a little bit lighter. And my goal with doing this defocusing or this de pre focusing, raising that is to try and get it as uniform as possible. Because that's what I hate is the inconsistency. So let me go wash this and see how much of this cleans up. I wish I had an air compressor in here like Clack's got. All right, this one's got some, and this is this is bamboo. It's got some inconsistencies at that bottom still. It's still a little bit lighter, but still wet too. But the biggest thing is, even if we deal with a, a little of the inconsistencies of bamboo, because I don't think you're ever going to get rid of all of it, do you remember what speeds we're talking about we're working at? And we're working with bamboo. We're not doing low and slow. Now, um, I'm going to do the 10 watt. So this is the MK2 30 watt slash 10 watt. I'm going to switch it to 10. Leave them the focus five millimeters above the surface. And grab another one of these. And now the 10 watt. Where did my test boards go? All right. Now, uh, let's see here. Let's do... These are my glasses for seeing. These are my glasses for reading. All right. So this one, this one we're going to slow down. Let's see what the library says. Uh, library says 2,530% max power. On a 10 watt. Mm. Yeah, no, nah, I'm gonna go with, uh, we'll go with 3000 and 100% power. So, uh, 3000. hundred percent power. Okay, laser, 
start. All right, now, uh, let's see here. Come over here, come over here. Go back. Uh, oh, wrong way, Conway. Go here. All right, for this one, hashtag 10 what? 10 what? 10 what? Hashtag 10 what? Um, uh, did you change the laser to 20 what? No, we were talking about 20 watts, but no, this is the 1030. But I've got some 20s in here, and Jack says he wants one. Jack says, I do not want an enclosure. Well, I might have some stuff you want to come talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to find a laser that does great engraving and cuts on all. Ain't no such thing. No such thing. There is no one laser for everything. That's the reason... You hear so many uh, different reviews about why well, this is the best. Well, it is depending on what you use it for. Uh, this is a, an, an addictive hobby. Uh, like, I I don't want to use anything but the Roly. However, I've got a job coming up that I've got to go do a, a backsplash for a bathroom. And I ain't going to get that backsplash in my rolly, not even with the pass-through. But I can take and put that black backsplash on the workbench and carry my gantry laser out there and set it over there and then use what is the print and cut whatever and light burn to where I can do a massive six-foot image if I wanted to. But I ain't no way I could do that with this. Uh, not easily. You can take the bottom out of it and you can do all kinds of stuff that, you could, but it'd be a whole lot of work, Not, and it wouldn't be practical. Uh, you can't cut um, all acrylics with a diode. You can cut some acrylics with a diode. Uh, so then, you know, if you're doing clear stuff or translucents, then you need CO2. So there is no one, one laser or one size fits all. Uh, and... Uh, Al saying CO2, I'm guessing you, CO2 uh, has more capabilities uh, as far as you know, more stuff that it can cut. Like you can do the translucents and a lot more of the acrylics and you can get more powerful CO2s. But I've got a CO2 sitting right over there in the corner that I haven't turned on in six months because I am not doing projects that require acrylic. And anything else that I'm doing, I can do on this. So it is about what projects you're wanting to do, what kind of projects you want, what material you want to work with, how big do you want to work with. Now, there, uh, there is coming, it's coming, uh, an extra large or a super size uh, Roly. Uh, he, uh, Leo put on Facebook, you know, a poll about who would like to see which one of three or four different uh, footprints. And it's my understanding one of those should be out very, very soon. And I think it's, I, I don't know, but I think it's going to be like up to 24 inches wide and 18 or 19 deep. It's going to be, a, it's going to be a big enclosure. And I'll, I'll be getting me one of those. Even if I step up, I'm getting me buying one of the first ones uh, because I would like to do some bigger signs and not have to mess with the pass through. Uh, dee, 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 dee. All right. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of 10 watt, 10 watt, 10 watt, 10 watt. Uh, Andy, you want to use the hashtag, not spell hashtag. I don't know if you're being funny there or, yeah, you got it right that time. You said, you know what? I'm going to get it either way. <laughs> Uh, 
and Jack says, yeah, that's why I have four lasers, uh, long hair, miss. Uh, CO2, diode, fiber, you, uh, depending on what all you want to work with, you know, one laser ain't going to cover it. <laughs> I don't know if there's any LA around or not, but uh, that might be uh, that might be something that might have to be looked into. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, Mark says, according to Dimitri, four ten by four ten by six by six ten, and let's see here. Uh, switch, switch, switch. Actually, you know what? Uh, Let's go over here and do the drawing for the 10 watt. Draw. James Richards. Yay, James. Send me an email. Hobo with wood at gmail.com. Hobo with wood at gmail.com. And I will get that out to you. Now, let's, uh, while that's up here, we're going to pop up my calculator because uh, Mark was very good to tell us it was a 410 by 610. But for us uh, people who are, are semi versed in metric, but not great, 410, 410 divided by 25.4. So it's going to be about 16 inches uh, by 610. So 6. 10 divided by 25.4 by 24. So around 24 by 16. 24 by 16. That's that's a good size. Uh, yeah, make some decent size signs with that. Uh, let's see here. Go back over here. Light burn. So it says we got about four minutes left on that. And I and I should have put these on a minute ago before I did it. Just to be safe, not sorry. Uh, yeah, because I will be. We've, we've slowed this down. Still doing 100% power, though. We've slowed it down. We're doing the 10-watt laser. And I'm curious if you're going to see any difference. Let's see here. Here's one. Here's one. Between, what was that last one? 12? 12,000? Yeah, I did 12,000 millimeters a second. And now we're doing... Uh, so we went from 12,000 millimeters a second down to 3,000 millimeters a second. Uh, and I'm and this one was at 12,000. So we'll see. Let me get Mark off here. Go away, Mark. Thank you. Uh, 12,000 millimeters a second. And we'll see if that one looks any better. Now, I've seen people that are doing you know, borax and different things that you can do to help treat it and try and make them darker, but uh, one thing that Clack mentioned that I, I agree with too is, you know, if these things, or if there's any chance at all that it might be used to any food environment, I don't like putting anything on them at all. Just soap and water. I use Dome dishwashing soap to, and a, a nylon bristle brush to get in there, and, and I brush it hard because uh, you'll have some soot and some ash that's in there, and brush it really hard and aggressively and that will sometimes even make it look more uniform by cleaning it up really aggressive. Uh, but that representation, seeing that pre-focus, so depending on what your spot size is on your laser, you'll need to go to your laser specs if you don't already know them. And it blew my mind to listen to some of the people in some of the chats and be like, Oh yeah, my spot size is this, my spot size is this, my spot size is that. And I'm like, well, only after a week of playing with this nonstop have I got this committed to memory that it's 0.35 by 0.22 on max power on the 30 watt. The 10 watt. I might have just shot myself in the foot. Because guys, look at this. Let's look at this. Sure enough. All right. 
So this is the 30 watt module from Rolly. The 10 watt spot size is 14 by 0.18. Well, it's almost square in the 10 watt mode, which is what I'm working on now. So actually, I, it's okay. It's only a difference of four hundredths of an inch. But here, where this one has got a wider spot size scanning on the Y, this one would be wider scanning on the X. But it's such a small difference that I believe we're going to be okay. But that's what I was getting ready to say is you need to go to your manufacturer's specs on to see what your spot size is because on the Roly, there's one, two, three, four, five different spot sizes, depending on which laser module you have and which power setting it's set in. The, the 10 watt spot size, when you've got the regular 10 watt Roly MK1, you've got the MK220 slash 10 and the MK230 slash 10. So there are three different modules that have a 10 watt laser beam and all three of those have different spot sizes. So you have to get to know your laser, your spot size, get to know which way is the widest, which one's going to give you your best widest beam when you pre-focus that laser. All right. Now, let's go watch this and see what it looks like. All right, so this is the 10 watt soaking wet at what was it, 3,000? Yeah, 3,000 lines, 3,000 millimeters. I don't know why I keep wanting to go to line 3,000 millimeters a minute at 100% power. And I see a I see a little bit more inconsistency with this one, and that could be in the bamboo, and it may not be as noticeable once it dries up. Uh, but I don't see as much. These are these others are, in my opinion, this one's completely dry. This one's still a little damp. These are a lot more uniform and consistent with their their coloring. And uh, I was just had a thought about, and yeah, I think we should do this. We got 80 some odd people. Now, what I want to do, and this is this is going to be, this is untried. I'm, I just had this thought. Let's do, uh, let's do, let's do it at Clax settings. He did 12,000 uh, millimeters a minute. 100% power, and he just did a little twist out of focus. So I'm going to lower the focus back down to, to near focus and see how much difference there is if there's any inconsistencies between the two. So, excuse me. So let's grab another. Uh, if y'all ain't got anywhere to go, let's grab another one and see what changing that focus does. Oh, 
Okay. Now, here, here. And he said he focused it and then just gave it a little twist. He didn't do much, he said. All righty. Uh, and here and reload. Yep, that works and that works and that works. And if you'd like to have this one and you don't know what it's going to turn out to look like, and if it, if it turns out pretty shabby, and actually, I almost wish it does, because this would be another way to showcase. And I'm, I'm, well, you know what? I don't know how that's going to work. We'll see. If it turns out to be less than consistent, and an, and what I would consider an undesirable result, then I'm going to change the focus on it, back to raising it back up five millimeters, put it back on the laser bed, and try running it again and see what it does see uh if i wasn't changing the focus it'd be a non-issue it just you could run it again it, it, this machine is so precise you can take it off the machine and put it back on take it off put it back on and it's going to go to the same place every time but by changing the focus on it i don't know how that would do it may not be noticeable i don't know uh if you might be interested in this one hashtag focused F-O-C-U-S-E-D, hashtag focused. And let's see here, looking at comments. Yeah, Mark says, uh, uh, talking to Steve, says, I recently started using line after fill and what a difference it makes. It really defines your engraving. I... Anytime I'm wanting to accentuate an engraving, especially on text, I always use line after fill on uh, my engravings, uh, but it really helps with the bamboo situation. But line after fill is a way to really make everything pop, it gives the definition to it. Uh, yeah, Greg, I, I, I've seen some of the guys talk about, you know, baking soda and borax and, uh, uh, I've even seen some of the guys trying to do the titanium, uh, like they do with the Norton white tile method, but it's a lot of work. It's a lot of hassle. If you don't get it distributed evenly, that can cause some problems and, uh, and I've never seen anybody get excellent, excellent results out of it. And in fact, that Jack says I did the baking soda trick and the borax trick with not much luck. Yeah. I, um, not enough of a difference in it to make it worth the hassle. Uh, if you're wanting, if you're wanting first class, prestigious, nice cutting boards, then you're not using bamboo, you know, uh, and as Clack told his customer, when you're using bamboo, expect inconsistencies. So you tell your customer that up front, that there's going to be some irregularities and that's the nature of the beast. So they know it in advance and you don't have to worry about it when there is some slight variations. Now, but I'm trying to minimize that. Uh, you you don't see a whole lot. And I'm curious to see by lowering this focus and going back to the 30 watt. Hmm. 
going back to the 30 watt, lowering the focus, changing the speeds. Uh, we're going to go to 12,000 millimeters a minute at 100% power, 150 lines per inch with a 90 degree scan angle. And say OK and send it. All right, so it's doing its thing. Uh, a bunch of focus, 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 focus. Uh, yeah, uh, I've always used line after fill to help with bleed over in paint fill projects. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, anytime I'm going to be hand painting, having that uh, really defined line there. You, you're using a small brush and you just dab right up to it and you don't have that bleed over into multiple colors. That's a great, great tip. And what do you mean by line after fill? Well, long hair miss. Let me jump over here and show you in Lightburn how you set that up and what it's going to do. So we'll switch. And I'll open up my cuts my my cuts and layers settings and here you'll see there's two layers to this this is my double alt layer but there's a fill and then there's a line there's a a sub layer and you can have at uh several sub layers within one layer but what i've got here we're doing 12,000 millimeters a minute at 100% power in a fill mode with a 90 degree scan angle, 150 lines per inch, scanning back and forth on a bi-directional, doing that feel. Once it does that, then it's going to come over here to sub layer number two. And I'm having to do uh, three or 3,000 millimeters a minute at 30% power in line mode. Now, if we go over to the preview and we roll this back, you can see it's going to scan and do that feel. And then once it completes the feel, and now I'm going to hit the play button and let it play. And we'll speed it up just a little bit. Now what you see the laser doing, and now I'll slow it down a little bit. The laser, if you can see that X, Oh, didn't mean to do that. And I'll zoom in. See there? It's giving you a line after feel, and you can see it's giving it a define, some definition to those letters. Now all the way around the banner. So that is what we mean by line after field. Do, 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 do. I have tried Gravini box. Wow, it worked great. Yeah, I like that. And I and I can't if if you are the viewer who recommended Gravini several live streams ago, throw your hand up and we'll give you credit. I can't remember the name. Uh, it's turned off. Uh, I've always used boxes.py till somebody in a live stream said, hey, you might want to check out Gravini. And man, is it a lot more user friendly and light burn. Doesn't have all these loops and crazy radiuses and all this. I was helping uh, Pebbles today. Uh, she was had a a design she wanted to do a box that had a sliding lid on it, a removable sliding lid. And I've got one on hubbowithwood.com. It's my ATM gift box. It's got an ATM on it it's for putting gift cards in and greeting cards. I said, but that one's okay. But Gravini, which I only just recently found, has got a much, much nicer one. And we got together and Hobo's world here online, and and I showed her how to do that in Gravini, and it that is a cool cool setup. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, let's see here. 
I don't know if it's in here or not. Let me, I need to go. Oh, okay, here we go. It's me who recommended Gravini. So, Mark, stand up and take a bow, sir, because that was one heck of a suggestion. That is awesome. So, everybody give a shout out to Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. That is awesome. Gravini is a great, great tool. Uh, let me check to see if something's in the shop or if it's in the garage. It must be in the garage. Uh, let's see. Where'd it go? Here we go. Uh, Dale says, thank you, Steve. I became a gold member this week. I love your files. They work great. You, you're you going to do a jewelry box anytime soon. Um, since you are a gold uh, patron, a gold supporter, uh, I will I will send you a file that I've got. I, I don't know if it's what you think of when you think of jewelry box. This is a file that I've been working on for quite some time, and I've built one. It used to sit in the back back here. It's actually a three-drawer sliding drawer jewelry box with a flip top, but it is a major build, uh, a major build. In fact, uh, This is one of the pieces of the prototypes that I, when I was putting it all together. And if this isn't the right uh, aspect ratio, I changed a whole lot of things. But this is the skeleton of the box, uh, the back and the sides. And then you've got individual drawers that slide out. Now, this one has been sitting around, and it was a mock-up. But individual drawers that will slide out, and I've got this one so tight it's uh, the cabinet makers refer to it as a piston fit. I, I'd never heard that till a cabinet maker looked at it and he said, "Man, that's nice. That's what's that?" And he said, "See, those are piston fit." I said, well, "What are you talking about?" And he said, "The way they go in, you can actually feel the pressure on them. They're they're piston fit, uh, but there are." And this was another one where I had a troll get on me. I have veneers that I put over the face of all this to cover it all up and make it look nice. And they're like, well, that's not a veneer. Veneer's real thin stuff. And I said, man, a veneer's anything you want it to be if it's covering something. You can have brick veneers. You know, houses have brick veneer faces on them. So a brick can be a veneer. The veneer is not defined by its thickness. Veneer, by definition, is just something that's covering something else. Uh, and I just, I just love those intelligent people that like to get on my nerves. All right, so let's see here. Uh, switch, 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 and switch, and draw. Okay, I don't even know how to say that. Burgessel, or I might even might be Burgess L. Maybe uh, hobo with wood at gmail.com. Hobo with wood at gmail.com. Now, guys, I don't know if you noticed or not, but I didn't put any qualifiers on any of the giveaways tonight. I did not say US only or lower 48 only. So I don't know where you guys are at. Didn't ask, didn't care. Uh, right. Let's go clean this up and see if there's any. Uh, I see uh, there's one thing I already see before even cleaning it up that I don't like. Let's go clean it up.
All right, this is, I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, but it's obvious as can be in person. And this is what I expect when I look at bamboo up until now. Now that I've seen this defocusing, I don't ever want to see this again. Uh, make sure y'all looking at me and not at the wrong screen. Uh, thank God. Thank y'all see me. All right, so there there is a little bit of variation in color, but more than that is the irregularities of the engraving. And I'm about to get in really kind of tight for you to see it, and I don't know how well to focus. But you can see it really good there in this little, all those lines, all those horizontal lines that run through there. And you can see it up top, and you can see uh, which side is it on. That white line that runs across there and runs all the way across. On any of them that are defocused, you don't see that as, as much. You see some, but it's not as much, not as pronounced. In person, it's a big difference, a huge difference. So that's what I've learned this week. Deep pre-focusing the laser five millimeters and then learning your laser's spot size so you can find out because 90% of them, if not 100% of them, 100% of them probably, are rectangular shaped laser beams. Learning which one is the widest and how is it a great enough difference that it varies and and in a little bit can make a lot a difference, especially when you start pre-focusing it and raising it up. And then when you go, once you figure out which axis is going to have the widest spot size, then use that scan angle to do the engraving. And that'll help make it a more uniform finished look, at least from my experience and what I've seen, and I'm not doing it at 2,000 you know, millimeters a minute. We're working at 12,000 millimeters a minute and even up to 20,000 millimeters a minute and getting good uh, good enough presentable pieces to, to present and sell. And when you're doing them at 20,000 millimeters a minute versus 2,000 millimeters a minute or 2,500 millimeters a minute, how many more are you getting done in the same amount of time? Time is money. And whenever you're talking about, and these are things that you're selling for, you know, 20 and 15, $35. And if you can do, you know, five or six in the same amount of time, you can do one. Then you've just made a whole lot more money in that amount of time. All right, let's see here. Uh. Mark says, I'm glad you all like it as much as I do. Yeah, everybody everybody I've seen that has gone and checked out Gravini, Mark, has really, really loved your bringing it to our attention. And that is a big, big, big thank you. Uh, yeah, ignore them trolls. Yeah, I, I do. I try to. I, I At least I don't respond to them personally. You know, the ones I really like are the passive aggressive ones. The uh, passive aggressive ones are like, hey, that's really great. But uh, not to be critical, these are the things that's wrong with it. <laughs> uh, well, if you didn't want to be critical, then why'd you even bother? Because that's all you're doing is you being critical. Uh, and and I love those conversations with me. Uh, when people walk up, hey, I, I you know, I hope this 
just don't don't take any offense to this. Well, you know whatever they're getting ready to say is going to be offensive. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some people just ain't happy unless they're trying to make others miserable, or they're not happy if somebody else is. You know, uh, they can't stand to see somebody else happy. You just. Mm. All right. Uh, well, if it's a piston fit, wouldn't uh, wouldn't Den Thirty be the choice? Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Uh, Imperfect Bob, is this your new time slot, Steve? No. Uh, Imperfect. Uh, what's going on this week is I'm having issues with my editing software. Normally, the plan is I'm going to try and get two recorded videos up a week. And that's asking a lot. It really is. But if I can uh, manage to you know get something up on a Tuesday and something up on Thursday, and then on Saturday do a kind of a recap and talk about anything that needs to be talked about, share the projects I've been doing. If people have bought them having questions or problems, uh, like for uh, Tuesday this week, if you were there, you've seen, you know, uh, I dropped my first uh, Easter piece and that's a painted version and smaller version. Uh, that's on hobo with wood.com. And the the idea is I'm I'm no longer in fact if I put my banners up here let's see here turn 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 off imperfect and go back to banners this in fact I should have put this up already we got 84 of you still here um uh, guys please like subscribe and share it helps immensely with the uh, algorithms in YouTube and uh, I'm I'm getting ready for my Two-year anniversary. Two-year anniversary is coming up on, I think it was June 15th. Uh, it'll be Saturday before Father's Day. We've got big plans for the uh, anniversary this year. Uh, last year, the big deal was I got a haircut. <laughs> I shaved and got a haircut on last year's anniversary. But this year, we're going to be giving away a Roly. And I don't know which Roly yet. And it's not going to be limited to the lower 48 states. And it's not going to be dependent on how many viewers or how many likes or how many subscribers. Somebody in the live stream on June 15th, my two-year anniversary live stream, is going to take home a Roly Lasermatic laser. Don't know which one yet, but any of them is a Cadillac. Uh, so you want to... Definitely set your schedule and make plans to be in that stream because it's going to be done. It's going to be given away. Uh, I am where 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 are we at right now? I'm just for giggles and sake. Uh, go over to YouTube. Go over to Studio. Uh, we're at 8,500 subscribers right now. I'm I'm tracking just in the normal growth, uh, it, the way it's tracking right now. I should be at 10,000 subscribers by my two-year anniversary. But if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And that's let, help. help because I'm, <laughs> what I just said about, I don't want to offend anybody, but... <laughs> Most of you watching, the majority of you watching, are uh, of a certain age and maybe not fully aware of how all these things work. And you, and then some of you know more about it than I do. But there's a large majority of you out there that's like, okay, well, yeah, I've never subscribed, and, and understandably so in some cases because on the previous channel I was on, they had – what was it? Wasn't subscribe. It was become a member. Oh, I I never even understood what it was. You could become a mem a YouTube member. I don't have that. There is no cost at all 
for you to hit the subscribe button in YouTube. It doesn't cost you a penny. You're not committing yourself to anything financially or uh, any type of uh, contracts at all. You can unsubscribe anytime you want to. But by you subscribing and hit that notification bell in the in the video so you can get notifications when we go live, uh, a, a good number of you have done that because before I got everything straightened out, there were a bunch of people already in the live stream here waiting and waiting for me to go live because they got a notification that I was getting ready to go live. So if you're a subscriber and you hit that notification bell, then you're not going to miss out on anything many if if you can. You, you won't miss out on them because you didn't know about it because you'll be told about it. Uh, so like, share, and subscribe. Let's go for 10,000 subscribers before June 15th. We're going to be giving away a Roly on June 15th. And not my used Roly. This will be a brand new Roly. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Excited about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Chris, it's a mystery Roly. And, and it's partly because we're so far out uh, on the date. It's like I was, in fact, uh, I, whenever I was looking today at the specs, uh, in fact, go over here. They, he had to put a banner up here. Uh, that right here, 30, 30 watt configurations out of stock available March 1st, delayed from February 28th. So he had to put it off two days because of a delay in, in production, what have you. So things happen and, you know, you're, might make a plan on doing, you know, a, a 30, a MK2, MK2 30 slash 10. But then come June 15th, ain't none. They're out uh, and they're not available. Don't know when, you know, it might be. So when we get closer to it, we'll have a better idea of what it's going to be. But as I said, any Roly, I mean, would you argue if I said, hey, man, I want to give you a Lamborghini. Which one? Doesn't matter. It's a Lamborghini, man. <laughs> and Carl says it was a good shave and a haircut. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, I've I've gone through some transitions in my life. Uh, let's see here. Here we go. I'll put this up here. Uh, well, uh, this switch. That's that's me and my nephew, and that was before Hobo with Wood, but I had the full beard going on, and you know the whole, you know had the hairstyle. He was doing a Christmas play, and that was uh, that was at the theater. Uh, so that's one look. Uh, go back here. I'm on photos, and there's the redneck. That's uh, what's his name? Uh, Sterling K. Brown from uh, This Is Us. Well, this was Army Wives, Sterling K. Brown and me, and he that was right before he kicked my butt in Army Wives. Uh, but I was looking. Oh, and there we go. There's the ball headed Steve. <laughs> and I'm looking for Santa Claus, Steve. I'm uh. I'll have to find that one. Uh, but I'll go through some looks. I'll change it up sometimes just to be changing it up. Uh, let me see here. Jimmy says, one thing I've learned about bamboo is there will possibly be inconsistency between the pieces. I did three for our daughters on Christmas. Yeah, and uh, and and engrave one small spot too deep. Yeah, there yeah, you can have some and those um those joints in the wood and uh the knuckles as uh clack calls them anytime you got that those are going to engrave differently or not at all. Uh so when you're looking at laying out your bamboo, and that's what I looked at here. It's like this one had one of those right in the very center. So this one didn't, and I knew that's where my image was going to be. That's which, why I picked that side. 
So you have to look at that and look for your least amount of problem areas. Uh, June 15th, June 15th, and it's going to be a 3 p.m. Eastern time. So I don't, pop up where are you at? Uh, I'm doing it early for me, 3 p.m. Eastern time. And that way, my European viewers are catching it at 8, 9 o'clock in the evening. So even my European subscribers are going to be able to be there for the live stream for the potential of winning the Roly and not miss it because it's at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. And I didn't call anybody old. I said of a certain age, didn't I? I didn't say old. I didn't say old, I don't think. I tried not to. Uh, tried not to. But yeah, 80, 80. And, 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 and the demographics in Lightburn, or not Lightburn, demographics in YouTube tell me who's watching. And I know we've got a few ladies here tonight, but the majority of my viewers and the majority of my returning viewers are of the age of 70 and up. And the percentage of returning viewers that are subscribers is like less than half. So you old conjurers need to hit that. And I said old, hit that subscribe button. It ain't going to cost you a penny. You're constantly coming back and watching. And it's only going to help me out. And I'm not asking you to give me a single penny. Uh, just hit that subscribe button. You're already here and you're already here all the time. So hit that subscribe button. Uh, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for being tactful. I was, and now I just said it. You're old. We're old. Uh, but I don't feel it. I swear. Sometimes I seem like blinky eyes is just in high school. And that was a different lifetime ago. I'm not old. I'm just youthfully challenged. I'm not old just because I suffer from old timers disease. Yep. Yep. There we go. Old and old in body and young and heart and mind. Well, uh, I'm, I'm oldish in body. I'm even older in heart and I'm a child in mind. <laughs> Cause I, you know, quintuple bypass, half a dozen heart attacks and two strokes. My heart's not the greatest. It's, my heart's probably not as good as your 80-year-old heart. But we ain't going to worry about it. <laughs> Jeff says, I'm not I'm not old either. I'm 21 with 36 years experience. <laughs> uh, I'm a subscriber, but been watching on my TV unsigned. So now on, I'm back on my iPad signed in. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. And long hair says, I'm just seasoned. <laughs> oh, my. Let's see here. Yeah, now, Charlie Daniels, look, I used to... Uh, wasn't Charlie Daniels. Who, who did I get? And that one was a little bit more like Charlie. But when I had my glasses on, oh, fudge. Come on now. Um, I'm, I can't believe. Jerry Garcia. That's what I used to get all the time. Jerry Garcia. Uh, got that a whole lot. And... In fact, I got to find this. I got to find this and see here. Uh, not there. Photos, your photos. Back uh, in 2019. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, there, there's Hobo with Wood. That was before the haircut. Oh, wrong one. Too many. Uh, let's see. Dee, 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 dee. 
in 2019, in the month of October, I drove from North Carolina to Atlanta, Georgia, to get my hairs did. Uh, I went down to Atlanta to see a Santa Claus stylist. Uh, I wanted, in fact, to see. Here we go. Here's some. Here's some. Uh, comparison photos. People said, and just take imperfect off there. Me and Willie, me and Jerry, and with the clean shaven, uh, what was his name? Don something another. There we go. And there's there was high school, and the same guy was his name, Don Johnson. Yeah, yeah. uh. But I want to find this. I want to find the Santa photo. I was going to be, it was October, not December. I wanted to be Santa Claus for Halloween. I was bad Santa. And I had a lot of fun with it in the month of October. <laughs> the month of November got to be a little bit more challenging. And so we had to put an end to that. Uh, come on now. YouTube, or not YouTube, Facebook is scrolling very slowly. But what I did was uh, for Halloween, I'm dressed up as Santa Claus. And the only candy I gave away was black licorice. Which is supposed to be representation of a lump of coal. And as kids come to the door and ding dongs, trick or treat, trick or treat. And I'm like, ah, and I give them a lump of coal. Merry, uh, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. And then there's always, especially with those preteens or early teens, it's not Christmas, it's Halloween. Yeah, I know, kid. This is just my way of letting you know I ain't working anymore this year. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. And uh, for some of the younger ones, it, they got a little upset. Mom, Santa's not working no more this year. And, but, you know, it was just my sense of humor. I had fun with it. And I want to show you this because I, I drove all the way to Atlanta to get this hair done. And she, uh, that's her full-time job. She is a year-round full-time Santa cosmetologist. And she has people that come from all over the world to see her to get her hair done. They'll come from Canada down to Atlanta, Georgia to get the Santa makeover. Uh, and Facebook is just slow. I got too many pictures in there. So let's see. Uh, if you pre-focus the beam, it is not wider. It is longer at the track so spear will it if you pre-focus the beam it is not wider it is longer it is the track i don't know what that word's supposed to mean spear will be in the burn no it's the evidence and and the evidence the proof's in the pudding uh these were both pre-focus the same amount, and let me turn. Whether or not I'm completely accurate in the way I perceive how that works, the results are the way I perceive it. Here, this is the same settings, and I've got, even on 20 watt, there's evidence of a burn, 20 watts and 30 watts, there was nothing in 10 watt at all, but here there's hardly no, no evidence at all, even under 30 watt. And the difference was being scanned on the X and being scanned on the Y. And that was the only difference. I mean, this was Y and this was X and the X did not produce. The only difference, the only difference was the way it was the scanning. So to have such a very di different output, have a, a a lot going on here and nothing going on here. Uh, it, 
that's just the way I perceived it. I don't know. And like I said, I'm not I'm not a laserologist. I'm not I don't build them. I don't know them. I don't understand them. And cockatoo, you may know a whole lot more than I do, and I yield to you, sir. But the the way that the outcome suggests that it's uh, a wider beam that way. Uh, don't know. It works. Uh, let's see here. Getting closer. I'm on. Now well, it's slowly but surely buffering. Oh, okay. Uh, well, the don't know why we didn't see. Oh, this is. Uh, let's see here. Auto. Auto. So there's me and Kelby when he wasn't kicking my butt. Uh. Or Sterling K. Brown, rather. I voted. Uh, that was me as Pennywise. But let's see here. I'm looking for ah fudge. I'll have to find it and get it ready, prepared for. Hey, there's Clack. Clack's at the. Uh, some kind of convention, and I think he might be in Atlanta. I ain't sure. But anyway, let's see here. Dun, 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 dun. Um, all right, let's see. The spot size should expand vertically and horizontally at the same time. Uh, and, and, and even if it does, it, and, and I, I, I don't, I don't know how you get a rectangle. I don't know. And that's, again, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm still trying to figure this out because I was so dumbfounded about those results and why it was such a drastic difference between the Y, the 90 degree scan, and the zero degree scan. In fact, I'm, I've, I've, I've asked Clack when he gets back because he was doing the zero degree scan. So I'm wanting him to do this when he gets back to his shop and do a 90 degree scan and do that really large and see what his opinion on how and why. And I'll be, I will, I, in fact, I the reason I called him today was I was hoping to have him come on with me and him do some live and get his instant feedback. But he was traveling and had the convention to go to, so we didn't have that opportunity. But not to say that there won't be more discussion about this later uh, and, and help me understand and help me to understand and to help you understand correctly. Uh, but again... I used to tell people when they would tune in, please do not try to duplicate, replicate, or simulate anything you see here on Hobo with Wood. Any loss of body parts or any bodily damage, I am not responsible. <laughs> that was my disclaimer right out of the gate. Do not duplicate, simulate, or emulate anything you see here. Uh, because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but for me to try and understand why I got such a really good, wide, good coverage here. And then when it was scanning this way, it wasn't perform performing as well. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but even if it is coming out here proportionally, it, this one is getting a whole lot wider than this narrow one is going to get a little bit wider, you know, as it tapers out. It's, so it's, yeah, there might be some going on, but not as much. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. 
I'll be the first one to tell you these are these are these are what I perceive to be going on. Uh, I I tried to look at, and it's uh, when you look at the way they give you representations of laser beams and how they're being focused. It's one. It's two dimensional, or, or it's it's you're not seeing it in in three D, and so I my brain is still trying to wrap around how all that's working. Um, I always try to go. I always try to engrave across the grain so the best bamboo results across or with the grain. Yeah, I, when I'm doing bamboo, I I, I want to do I want to engrave the bamboo at a 90 degree uh, against the grain. I think that's what you're saying. And not with the grain. I get a whole lot more hips and valleys when I go with the grain with bamboo. I try to go 90 degree against the grain. Uh, let's see here. Da, da, da. Maybe Leo can answer the laser beam question on expansion. Yeah, yeah. I, or you know, uh, I can reach out to Leo, and but I tell you who's, and they're both good about getting back to you. But Dimitri's, and I'm, I'm in North Carolina, Eastern Time. And last night when I was trying to figure this out, let me hit Dimitri up. So I got on Facebook and messaged Dimitri. And ask him a few questions about you know this and that, and he's right back with answers. And I was you know, had some follow up questions, and he's and he asked me. He said, "Hey, can, can you can you stream? Can you message? Can we?" You know, he said it's a lot faster instead of typing. And I'm like, yeah, "Sure, yeah." But I hint, I sent him the link to Hobo's World, and then he said, "On second thought, <laughs> man, it's 4 a.m. <laughs> he's in Greece." It's four o'clock in the morning, and he's answering the questions instantly. He said, it, 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 "Let's let's talk another time." He said, I, "I need to get some sleep." And I said, "Okay, okay, sorry, another time." Uh, but I was impressed that at four a.m. his uh, alarms tweaked him, and he, and he and he didn't hesitate. He answered. Uh, and Jeffrey says, "Yeah, I think he's asleep now. I just got off the phone with him." Yeah. Uh, I enjoy talking with Dimitri. Uh, all right, guys. So I think that's all that we've got. And like I said, I will. I'm going to continue to learn more and see how wrong am I? How right was I? How partially right was I? But I encourage you to do this. Find out what your spot size is on your laser. Find out its dimensions. Find out which axis has the widest laser and use that as your scan angle. Scan on the X or scan on the Y, whichever one's the widest. When you're doing bamboo, pre-focus it five millimeters and then do a test. Now, here's the test that I did. I did uh, for my 10-watt laser. I did let's let's jump over to Lightburn. Lightburn. Go into the laser tools material test. Now I wanted to see just how fast, how much. Uh so I did a 20 by 20 grid, but based on what I'm seeing here with the 10 watt. You would probably be sufficient if you did a 10 by 10 grid and started at uh, maybe a speed of maybe 1500, maybe a minimum of 1500, and then a max. I really started trailing off at about. 10,000. Now, I don't know what your cap laser's capabilities are. And then a speed, the power setting wise on my 10 watt, there really was no need to do anything less than probably 30 watts. So then maybe start at 30 watts 
to 100 watts. 30 to 100 preview. And that test would probably give you pretty good results scanning on your widest axis, five millimeters pre-focused with a 10-watt laser. That might be a decent test grid for the 10-watt. And then if you run in a 30-watt, uh, I probably would not do anything less than around 50% uh, power, up to 100% power, and start my speeds at uh, probably uh, 10,000 and 20,000. If your laser has those speed capabilities, if your laser can't move that fast, then you'll just, I would look for your, what's your laser's top speed. And another thing, your lasers are probably going to have different speeds on the X and the Y. I know mine does. It's 24,000 max speed on the Y, 30,000 max speed on the X. Uh, but those, based on the test results that I did at a five millimeter pre-focus, your widest scan angle at those speeds on bamboo, and we're talking about bamboo tonight, folks. Uh, those would probably give you your, some of your best results. Here's the test grids. I ran 20 by 20s, and I stopped this one because it was, I could already tell, there was nothing going to be usable from there on up. And what I did here was kind of gave you a, 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 a cross section and even down a little bit more. And the same thing here. Those suggestions were the max or the best looking settings for testing. Um, my suggestions. These are from what I'm seeing working on my bamboo with my laser. Uh, bah, bah, bah. All right. Uh, <laughs> also, just making a comment helps hope with YouTube. Yep. Just making a comment uh, helps with the, the YouTube algorithms in the stream and in the replays. Commenting on the on the when you're watching an older video, say, "Hey, I learned something. Hey, appreciate this. Hey, I like that." Or you know, or if you're going to be a troll and say, "Yeah, like this," but these are the things that were wrong. <laughs> and actually, you know what? I don't mind, and I encourage constructive. It's like uh, whoever was telling me, uh, making the comments about, you know, they they think, uh, you know, and Pop Pop, I think, yeah, you know, I may be completely and totally wrong with the way I perceive this working. And I am not against being told and explained and show me how this works. Uh, I've had several comments in YouTube on the videos that were suggestions and comments about how things could have been done better in Lightburn, and they were game changers for me. And I love seeing that kind of stuff. What I don't care to see is your opinion. <laughs> you know, if it's just critical. If it's a critical opinion and you're just a negative Nancy, keep it to yourself. Uh, you know, because we're here to have fun, and you know, you know what opinions are like. But if it's something that is truly constructive and informative, I want to know it. I want to hear it. Uh, so, all right. Uh, we're going to call it. We're going to call it. I appreciate you guys hanging out. And I'm going to get this thing straightened out. I'm going to get my editing software either fixed or replaced so I can do recordings instead of these live streams. Uh, I can stay more focused and edited, somewhat more focused with the recordings instead of the tangents that can happen in the live streams. So thank you. Thank you each and all for everyone being here. If you were one of the winners, make sure you've sent me your information in an email, hobowithwood at gmail.com, and I'll go get these things out in the mail tomorrow. I appreciate all of you being here. 
jump over to hobowithwood.com. I've got this up this week, and I'm working on a new concept. I want to do a commercial Easter piece, and I'm thinking of doing a, a round that might be, it actually might be three layers. Uh, so it might be one, and yeah, maybe three layers. And the top layer will have a, a, a an egg in the very top layer. And then the second layer will have five eggs. So that's six. And then the third layer will have a place to put six more. So there'll be a place for 12 eggs. And each egg, and these to be the plastic eggs. We don't want to put our real eggs out there for that's going to be out there for 12 days. But do the little plastic eggs that you can put candy in and things in. Uh, and the idea I've got is the top egg is going to be a gold egg. And that's the one that you open on Easter. So to be the 12 days of Easter instead of the 12 days of Christmas, kind of like an Easter advent. Where there'll be a, uh, you, they can get one one egg a day for twelve days, and on the twelfth day they can open, and which will be Easter, they open the gold egg, and that's where the grand prize or the grand, the the biggest treat might be. Uh, you know, you might get even you know incorporate it with, you know, there's you know a daily scripture that's typed or handwritten in each one with the uh, the candy, so it's not completely commercial, so you can help. <clears throat> Kind of, you know, this is more for the younger kids because, uh, you know, they like the Easter egg hunts and the Easter money and all that. And that's what I'm thinking about is, you know, a, a three tier piece and maybe some floppy bunny ears on the, the top piece. Uh, I don't know about maybe making it a, a front and a back or maybe there's some bunny paws in the front and I don't, I don't know. I haven't now. I haven't put it all together yet. Um, it, it's coming together, but I haven't got it all together yet. But I hope to have that up next week, so I'll have another Easter project up. Uh, and then I had a, a viewer or a patron ask me about doing some dinosaur stuff. Their grandkids really like dinosaurs, so that's going to be coming soon. I told them it'd be after Easter before I got into the di dinosaurs. But my patrons are a huge supporter of this channel, and I couldn't do it without them. And they not they don't only contribute financially, but they throw out these suggestions and or needs. And that's what this was. This was this was a request from a patron. A patron said, "Hey, I need something to do this for Easter, and I want to do it on a single piece of twelve by twelve. So, bam, there it is. So, my patrons are. Uh, are a great source of support and ideas. Uh, so everybody's saying, saying, see ya, see ya, see ya, see ya. Uh, Greg, uh, Greg, 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 probably anytime after noon, <laughs> anytime after 12 o'clock uh, would probably be a good time. Probably anytime after 12. Uh, if, if the freight liners in the front of the house, then I'm probably here. Uh, Chris says dinos are old hat, very, very, very old. <laughs> yeah, and um, another one I've got, and I got, I need to start writing these down. Uh, some of you may be familiar with my calves, the baby calves that I've got for my newborns. They were, you know, boy and girl cow, and they had the little ear tag for one month through nine months. It's a photo prop. Well, somebody's asked me about doing teddy bear. So I'll be doing a teddy bear photo prop for newborns. So dinosaurs coming, teddy bears coming. Uh, heck, I'm an old dinosaur and would love to see what you create for dinosaurs. Well, I'm not going to be, I'm, I'm not going to be doing any kind of uh, three dimensional, I, the, you know, the puzzles. At least I say I'm not, I, I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> Uh, probably just be some dino art, maybe some dino uh, door hangers or something. Might be kind of cool to see, a, I don't know, maybe a, a T-Rex skull with his mouth wide open and he's biting the, the, the door, corner of the door. 
you know, so the T Rex is you know clamped onto the door. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of things I don't know, and I'll be the first to admit it. All right, uh, guys. So as usual, we're gonna say thank you again for being here. Thank you to all my patrons for all your support. Uh, couldn't be here without you. Uh, if you uh, want to consider becoming a patron, it would be greatly appreciated. Patreon.com slash hobo with wood. Gold members get 100% off of all of my digital files. Silver gets 80% off. Bronze gets 60% off. And all patrons are welcome to hit me up with questions on support and design ideas anytime you need it. But now we've said that, I want to thank you again for being here. And we're going to end this stream and never knowing when.